talk a bit about this. Uh, nice to meet you all. I'm Excel Cordo. Uh, as I already mentioned, I work from Subsur, uh, from Colombia, uh, from Bogota, uh, to be uh, to be, to say the exact location. Um, well, that's it. So today we are going to talk um, about testing quality metrics and one a topic that for me is very exciting that is, is mutation testing. Uh, okay, so let me one second. I'm going to share my screen. So please let me know when you can see the screen. So uh, can you guys see my screen now? Yes, we do. Yep. Okay, great. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so we are going to, uh, <clears throat> this information is, is going to cover, like, uh, we are going to cover, like, what is testing, what are, like, some methodologies, some steps of testing, like, uh, manual testing, UI testing, component testing, unit, unit tests, and, well, integration testing. We are going to talk about that. Then we are going to talk about, uh, the quality metrics, uh, some coverage, and then later at the end, we are going to talk about mutation testing and why can mutation testing increase our like metric of coverage because it's a concept that we can use like uh, as an addition in order to be able to have more data, more more data to to like uh, test failing, as you know in order to know what is failing and have more robust code as we uh, code in, in, in our projects. And we are going to have at the end a small demo. Uh, in the demo, we are going to run, a, talk about one a small function, a, run some unit tests and see how is the behavior and how we can like run mutation tester in order to know what is the, um, the changes that the mutation test do, uh, does in the code. And, well, uh, see, uh, as Adriana mentioned, you are free to ask questions. You can write the questions in the chat or can interrupt me uh, while I'm speaking. I'm not, I don't have any problem with that. So uh, feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, don't hesitate. Please. So yeah, this is the agenda. Uh, okay, let's start. So we are going to start with the testing pyramid. So what is the testing pyramid? The testing pyramid, it's like a metaphor. It's something that we use in all our projects, so we should use in our, our projects in order to divide the stages of testing, you know, in order to know what we are going to do, what it's, are the things that we have to do in every part of the application. So most of the time in our applications, we have a back-end part, we have the front-end part, or sometimes we only have the back-end part. So we, with that, we know that, uh, for example, in the front end part, we only going to use a manual and exploratory, and exploratory test. And then we are going to do some UI and an API, API testing, and that's it. And in the front end, uh, for example, in Angular, we can have some component testing and unit testing of the code, but it's not, uh, it's not common to use the, those testing in that part. But in the back end, most of the time we have unit testing, we have component testing and integration testing, but was, uh, but I mean, like um, in the back end, we don't have a, a UI. So the UI and Explorer test, we don't have that because yeah, we don't have an UI. So this, uh, uh, I'm going to make a disclaimer because uh, when we do the testing, we are going to make sure that our code has a great quality as a good uh, understanding is very maintainable, has a high maintainability over the time, uh, a good scalability. But when we are going to do the testing, we are not we are not making sure that the code is supposed to do what the client wants. Uh, I'm going to explain that. Uh, because sometimes when we uh, when you are talking with the client and you are presenting that hey we are going to do another uh, we are going to implement another stage of testing we are going to do explore uh, manual testing uh, or automatization of the UI testing with Selenium for example and the client is going to say but why is it going to work for me well it's going to make sure that the things that we are delivered to the clients are good and are supposed to behavior as expected but if the if the feature is not expected, is not going to make that the 
application is going to sell more or more users are going to use it now. It's, it's just a small disclaimer uh, when we were talking with the clients. So um, after that, uh, well, we continue with manual and exploit testing. Well, uh, in this manual and exploit testing, uh, as uh, the name mentioned, is uh, uh, some tests that we do manually uh, for this uh, stage of the testing. Most of the time, we use a happy path. For example, in an application that has a, a login, we do only the login, like, hey, we start with the user, uh, type uh, an email, a good email, and a good password, login, and if the login is successful, that's, that's the happy path. And we are like doing some exploratory tests. So in this part, we don't have any code because yeah, we are not doing any any by the system. The the person is the one that is executing the the, the test. So it's all the things all the things are like manually, and all the books that are like uh, uh, like came up in this stage are based on the on the person that it's doing the test. For example, if you can see that one button is a little aligned to the right, uh, more aligned to the right than expected. It's based on your in your in your eyesight that you are the one like reporting that book. But for example, other uh, developer or QA tester ca cannot see that and is not going to report that book. So it's it's like it's this is one is this stage is more for the project managers in order to check that all the feature that it's expected to go to stay in or to master um, well is is working properly in the, in the happy path next uh, we have the ui and api testing uh, well for the ui and the api we have different different tools and in this stage we are going to start going and uh, well sorry uh, we are going to go a uh, top top down in in this in this pyramid and then we are going to uh, go with unit testing. So uh, in the UI and API testing, well, in the UI, uh, this is going to make by some tools like Mocha or Selenium. I am pretty sure that you guys heard about those tools. This is some automation that is going to run the browser engine locally and is going to go to the application, is going to render all the HTML components and running the JavaScript in order to well uh, have all the application running and then based on some uh, instruction that we give to the to the, the to the test it's supposed to well have some some something like that for example we are going to say hey go to the login page and after that you are going to find a, a HTML button that and then click that button and after that you are going to find another another tag that is going to uh, for example is going to be model and well if if the program doesn't find that model at fail execute all the steps well it's going to fail the test and that's how it works in UI in UI and for the API well for the API we can use some some tools like Postman that is going to send some requests to some APIs and then it's going to expect some some objects based on the uh, input that we send of the object or the objects that we send uh, to the request. At, uh, later uh, in our stage, we have the integration testing. Uh, this is where, like, this integration testing is where I believe it meets the front end and the back end. Because at the moment, uh, based on the application that we have, we are going to have, like, that test that is going to, well, uh, redundancy is going to test the integration between different systems and I'm going to uh, give an example of how it, how it is so in this stage we are going to to for example test that the bucket is going to communicate uh, with the front end and this is different than the API testing that for example most of the time uh, to communicate between front end and back end uh, we are going to but um, the API testing, we are testing that the API works and that's it. But in the integration testing between the front end and the back end, we are testing that the information that we send from the back end to the front end is showing and, uh, and backwards. That the information that the back end is sending us 
to the front end is going to be processed and then it's going to uh, the output of that information is the, the expected. And well, uh, for the back end, mostly the integration testing, it's like the, it's the test that we are going to uh, make sure that all of the integration between different systems in the back end are, are going well. This, okay, so we have the component testing. Um, well, for the component testing, it is kind kind of similar with the integration testing, but I I like to give one example of what is the difference between the component and integration testing, because in the component testing we have like different components in inside our application, and we want to test that that component is working. The example I like to uh, use is that, for example, can be the body. Uh, an integration testing is an integration between the, the hand and the arm or the elbow, and the component is the hand. So the arm is a component and the hand is another component. So we are testing, the integration testing is testing the integration between the hand and the arm, and in the component testing is only testing that the arm is supposed to behave as expected and the arm is supposed to uh, behave as expected. And that's it, it's very granular. So as we go down to the, to the pyramid, we are going to see that we are going to become more granular. As we go up, we are going to see that we are going to go in a high level in order to be able to, if we are in the top of the pyramid, we are not using any code. But if we go down, we see that we are going to do more code than, uh, than the previous stage. Okay. And the last one is the unit test. Uh, the unit test is the most common stage that we do is the most basic is, for example, it's, I believe it is the, the only stage that all developers we should do in our projects, in all the projects that we do, in all the things that we deliver to the clients. At minimum, we should have a unit test. And um, sometimes the clients doesn't want that, but I believe it's, it's better for us and for the client, for the code, for, for the future of the project to have unit tests. In this unit test, it's the granularity of all the tests. In here, we are going to test all the functions, all the statements. It's supposed to test, we are here, we are supposed to test like everything that we have in the, in the functions um, in, in, in some code. And in, in other slides that are, are coming, we are going to see that we have some like metrics that is going to help us to say, hey, how many how many code that we have of that code are are being tested by the unit test. So this is the last stage. In this stage, we have like all the code. The mind terminality of this stage is very very high because every time that we do a change, we are supposed to do a well a unit test for that. If we fix a book. We are supposed to do a unit test for that book that we fix in order to know that it's not going to repeat or no, it's going, not going to broke it. If we do a change, we expect that some test fails because uh, we are changing something. So this is the, the main stage. And well, it's the test stage that we do in all our projects, in, our, in all our projects. So after that, we have some quality metrics uh, for. After we have we are in the unit test uh, stage, we have some quality metrics. In these quality metrics, where we are going to make sure that we can identify, we can like be aware of all the things that we are doing, and be able to tell that our tests are good and well, they are testing all the code that the most of the code that are possible. So for that, we have the different types. Uh, we have the lines of code. Uh, these, this type of metric where depending on the project, depending on the language, uh, there are some like um, average lines of code that you should have. And if you have more lines of code, you, you have to know that if you have more lines of code, well, the maintainability of that code is going to be higher because yeah, it's going to be more code to maintain. So it's a it's a good behavior, a good practice to have like 
depending on the language and the code uh, and the application, it will have some lines of code. We have the cyclomatic complexity. Uh, okay, this cyclomatic complexity is in order to know uh, based on all the lines of code that we have, which of those lines of code are being tested. So it's like something like the coverage. Uh, we have the unit test coverage. Uh, for the unit test coverage, is like a, it's a metric that is going to tell us, like basically, uh, how many. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. The cyclomatic complexity. It's like what are the paths that we are going uh, are being testing. Like for example, in application we have different if. So uh, how many paths of those are being tested? And in the unit test coverage, well, is going to tell us. Based on the code that we have, what are the code that are being tested? So if we have, like for example, ten lines of code, they are going to tell us, hey, the ten lines of code are being tested, or nine lines of lines of that code are being tested. And we have the static analysis tools or lean tool violations that we have. So for example, the the linters are something some tools that we commonly use in our projects. For example, uh, I don't know guys if you are using Visual Basic or maybe some application for JetBrains, but most of the time they are use some links in order to tell you, hey, the code that you are doing have some problems or uh, they are well they are very well. And the static analysis tools, for example, one. Um, what tool is SonarQ that is going to analyze the code and based on some practice and good practices based on, based on some standards of the language is going to tell us, hey, this code uh, is, is, is not working, not going to work, or it has some security flaws. But for example, this application is not using this line. So this line, what is the purpose of this line that is not being used? So that's the purpose of this static analysis too. Okay, so we have the coverage. Uh, the coverage is what metric that mostly, uh, most of the time we use uh, to give to our clients, to give uh, to show to our project in order to tell, hey, uh, based on the, all the code, we have 99% of coverage of all the code in our unit test. Uh, with that, we are making sure that most of the code are being tested, are being triggered by some tests, and that's very good. Uh, for that, we have different types. We have the method coverage that are, or the function, function coverage that is going to tell us how many functions that we have in our code. And based on that, how, function, how many functions are being called by the unit test. We have the statement coverage that is going to measure all the statements in, inside that functions. We have the branch coverage and the condition coverage is mostly the same because it's based on all the branches, it's all the paths that are going to take in that, it in that, in in that, like when we have a, an if statement, an else, else statement, it's going to tell us like those paths are being tested and the condition coverage is the condition that we have inside our if. So if we have like, for example, if, if this object is none, it's going to test that that condition. Well, if this object is none and this object has some property, it's going to test that those conditions are being called. That's the difference between branch and condition coverage. We have parameter value coverage that it's that the parameters that we send to our function are being used inside the function. Um, but this parameter value, well, can be detected by different tools like the, like the call static analysis. So linter, that is going to tell us, or in Python, we can use flake, that is going to tell us as well that that parameter is not being used in any, any part of the function. And well, we have, again, the cyclomatic complexity. Mm. Okay. So after that, this is a uh, this is something that we have to know in order to understand what is mutation test testing and why is the why it is important to maybe start using mutation testing. So mutation testing it's 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 a tool that is going to add a different measure to the coverage testing. It's not a, a tool that is going to replace that. Because sometimes in some projects, 
uh, they tend to replace the coverage um, metric with the mutation testing output. But you know, no, that's not the best practice. The best practice is to have the two uh, the two metrics working together. And we, and we are going to show you, I'm going to show you why why is that. Well, uh, mutation. What is okay? I'm going to start. What is mutation test? The mutation testing concept. It's it's basically try to do some mutation. The mutation are changed in the code that they are going to detect based on the tool that you are using. Uh, for example, in Python, you you are using a muta test. And um, well, if you are using Node.js or JavaScript, you can use a striker. And the striker have different mutation. I'm going to show you uh, later what are the mutation for muta test. But the strikers have different mutation that it does in the code. But it, it does that. So it's going to read the code, uh, identify what are the mutation that it can make, and it's going to make the mutation. And after that, it's going to run the test. And based on the output of the test, is going to say if that mutation was killed. It's supposed that when you do a change in the code, for example, you have a function uh, that is supposed to return and with an object. Well, if you change that to null, it's supposed to break some test, but most of the time it doesn't happen like that. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I was being uh, one one. Some, uh, something in the chat. So it's supposed to do that, but if if does it do that, well, the mutation lives. And that metric worked for us but because most of the time in the project, when we are working with different, uh, with a different multidisciplinary team, for example, uh, in one project, we, we can work 10 developers in the same project. Well, it's it happens that one, one guy, uh, it's making one change in the code. And it's broken something that is not going to be a show in the unit test. But if you go to the integration testing or you are doing some um, uh, UI testing, you are going to see, hey, the change that uh, Juanito did in some PR two weeks ago broke the forgot password. And you are like, oh, how we didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that the change I did in that function is going to broke that, but that's the, the goal of the mutation testing. Uh, so in the step by step, it's it's doing the things that I, I told you about. It's going to change the source code. At uh, the second step, it's going to run the uh, test related. A uh, mutation test has a disadvantage that it be based on the uh, the based on the application size can take more time than, than expected. If, if, for example, in one application can, can be running one day, if the application is very big, can be running one day, two days, in order to have the first, the first uh, report of the mutation testing. Okay, so the, the step three is going to, it's expected to fail the test. And if not, well, the step 3.2 is going to say, hey, this mutation uh, is living, so we have to do some change in the code. So I, I have one example here that we have some two functions, uh, a function that it's supposed to return the addition between two numbers or another function that it's supposed to return what number is greater than the other. And the mutation, when the mutation is applied, is going to change that to a different sign. For example, in, in the sum function, in the addition function, we have like the plus, but it's going to change it for the minus. And it's supposed to broke something. If it doesn't broke, well, the unit test that we did for that is not good enough. Yeah. And um, so here is the, so here's a small demo for that. So give me a second. So be, before the the demo, I'm going to show uh, I'm going to show the the library that we are going to use is called mute test for for these uh, mute test we have some mutation as I mentioned. So here we have like the 
the mutation that it's going to make based on the code that it finds. Uh, I'm going. I'm not going to go deeper in that, but I'm going to share uh, the link in the chat for if anyone uh, want to take a look. If it is, but this is some mutation that is going to make, and it's going to make it automatically in the code um, based on the code that it finds. For example, here are some examples that if we have this plus uh, equal, it's going to change this to minus equal, to multi multiply or to divisions, and it's going to make some changes. For example, here it had another example. The plus is going to be changes for division, for subtraction. Um, this and is going to change it for or or for big or uh, for or or for sor. Um, well, there are a lot of mutations. This and is going to change it for or CP greater than not equal. So there are a lot of mutations. But if we go to a striker. Um, that it's the mutation, uh, it's the tool used for JavaScript. It's going to show us so uh, show us uh, a different mutations. Two to two. Well, this is an example, but let me share the mutations here. Uh, well, here are some equivalent mutations that is going to to change. In the in the code, for example, the the A and the, the signs. Uh, but okay, I don't, I don't remember. To be honest, I sometimes I don't remember the the. Sorry about that, but I don't remember where are the documentation of these tools because some time ago I didn't use it. But okay, we can admit. But this strike mutation tool is for Node.js. You want, guys want to do, uh, 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 take a look, can can work. I know that it works for that .NET, but uh, but um, for C sharp. But I don't have experience working with with C sharp, so I don't know if it works very well with that. But if anyone is interested in trying that, you can go for that. Two two two. Okay, so let's start with. Is a small demo. Okay, guys. So here we have the function. This function is going to uh, it's going to take two two numbers and do the addition uh, of these numbers. That's simple. That's very simple. It's very like compact and that's good. So we are going. I have a test here uh, to test this um, this function. So I, I want you guys like tell me in the chat or open your microphones and tell me if I want I have to do some change in this test because this test is working properly. If I run this test, it's telling me, hey, uh, that's good. One test passed and that's okay. So do you guys agree in this test or want to do some change? So go in the chat or open your microphone and tell me. I'm going to give you one minute. What did you guys say? Mm -hmm. Okay, change here. Okay, so um, Go back here. Uh, okay, give me a second. Dimitro, uh, I, I, let me know if I pronounce your name right. Let's go to try it too. Two, two, two. Uh, well, I'm using some code, as uh, it's called Code Whispering from AWS that is going to give you some, some hints, but well, it, it works sometimes. If you do, and it's supposed to run like this, right? So if we run this, we have the same that is it's 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 passing. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll restart the function, it's it's for okay, like something like this. 
four, and let's run it. Yeah, it's continue, and that's okay. So most of the time when we uh, do the test or the unit test for this one, we, we say, okay, it's we are testing that, but we have to go deeper than that. We have to think in a different scenarios, in some different things that can break this, this function. And the if we go here, in a yeah, I'm going to run the mutation testing. The mutation testing, as I told you, is going to apply some mutations to the code. That is something that we are not going to see live because that's doing in runtime, but I'm going to run it. And after that, it's telling me that one, it runs some mutations, and one mutation, the multiplication didn't, didn't uh, it was live, it survived. So if I go here to the output, it's telling me that the, uh, the multiplication survived. So let, let's see, let's see and test it. If we go here and we try this, and we test the test, what happened? It passed. So as you can see, guys, that's 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 the thing I like in mutation testing. When something when it's telling us that the multiplication works, and you go do the change in the code and run it, run the test, and it it runs. So that's the magic. So as you that's the magic to realize that the test that you did is not enough to blind your, your code of change. What happens if some developer uh, or something changed this, change that for multiplication and it went to production? All the unit tests were working. So it's, it's not, you cannot see it. And if you are in a code review, you are like, hey, this change, okay, makes sense. The, the tests are working, so go to production, and then it's going to broke something because uh, if you run uh, different numbers in the unit test, for example, if you run something like this, if you run, it's supposed to be two, but if you run that, it's going to break. But in in the base, Unit test that you had, you were not you were not covering that case, so that problem could go to production and then it's going to break something, as I mentioned. So that's the magic of mutation testing. If I run this, maybe if I add this test scenario and run the mutation test, let's see it if it's going to break something. Okay, uh, well, uh, this is something that is going, he's going to run the unit test and he's going to make sure that all the tests before applying the, the, the mutation are running. So this is, this is good because here is saying that the base scenario is not running, is not working. But if I do this change, going back to first, and this run is running properly. Then I can go back here and run mutation testing. And then we can see that only adding this simple scenario is going to make sure that uh, when you are the, the power, when you are the floor, the, the division, the mod, the division, the multiply, or the subtraction to this code, it's working properly. So let's test it. If we do this chain and run this test, are going to fail. If we go here and do this, it's going to fail. So that's that's the magic of mutation testing, that it's going to run, it's going to make some mutations for you, and it's going to tell you what code is not like properly tested, properly unit test. Uh, this is the one. Uh, it's not prop it doesn't have the proper unit test in order to be able to detect that. And that's it, guys.
that's it. That's the concept of mutation testing. It's a concept that I, I wanted to introduce. I wanted to show. I wanted to show the magic, like as I show here with the unit test and how it can like work for you in order to have better unit tests. And yeah, that's it. I don't know if you have any question, any suggestion, anyone, anything that you want to comment. So I do have one quick question with respect to a larger code base where you have multiple modules that are tested by separate unit test files. Do you advise to run mutation against all tests or just a single file? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the bigger the code is going to, is the bigger the code is, is, the big, is going to take more. But based on the tool that you are using, based on the tool that you are using, most of the tool, it has run the related unit test. So if you have, uh, well, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I, I closed that. If you have, for example, another function here, uh, this greater, greater uh, than, I'm going to X, Y, uh, let's do it here. If you have two functions here, he's going to go to some function and he's going to well, run only the, the unit that's related to that. But to be honest, based on my experience, the tools that uh, we use for mutation tests doesn't do that properly. They run the related. So going back to your question, um, it's going to take long, but you can you can go pro you can go progressively, like running one uh, one test file, then going to going to another, and then going to all the projects in your all the files in your in your in your project. But this mutation test, it's a, it's a concept that if you apply that to a, star, a starting project, it's very good because from the start, yeah, it's going, it's going to have that. But that's the happy part. But as we know, we, go, we come to a project and the project is already had one year long of, of, of front time. So it's give it a try. Just give it a try, run it for the first time. If you are seeing that it's going, it's taking more than one hour and it's, it's continue running, stop it and go in a small parts. It's going, we are going to run this component, the login component. Then we are going to go to the forgot password component. Then we are going to go to the login com, uh, homepage component and go progressively. But if you run it at the first time and you in, in one hour runs all in, in your project, fantastic. You already have that. You already have all the mutations in, in for example, with this tool, you already have like all the, all the mutation that leave, like all the mutation that doesn't leave uh, for a striker, a striker, uh, the, the, the library that I showed for, for, J, uh, for JS have a different report in HTML that it's very, it's very good. So yeah, it's give it a try, give it a try. And if it doesn't work very fast, go to in, in modular parts, yeah. Um, any more questions? I'm going to start sharing my screen. Um, okay, um, Ariana, I believe that that's it. I don't know if yes, if yes anyone so. has any. Sorry, if, any, if anyone have any questions or something, well, um, an Excel Cordova, you can find me uh, in Teams. Uh, if you have any question, any suggestion, something that you want to tell or something that you want to discuss, uh, I'm very open to to that. So yeah, don't worry. Let's go ahead. Uh, so yes, uh, thank you, Etel, for uh, for being spe speaker and sharing all, all the knowledge that you shared with us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining uh, our today's meeting. Uh, all the materials will be spread among you. So yes, uh, wishing everyone to have a great Friday and weekend ahead. See you on our other uh, events. Bye bye. Okay, thank you guys thank very you. much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye -bye.